The most important aspect of any Sonic the Hedgehog game is level design. Yes, art is important, and so is a decent set of controls, but nothing is more important to making a fun Sonic game than good levels. And it's more complicated than just making a series of big roller coasters, too. Just look at the 3D Sonic games. Most of them are just a series of roller coasters, and most of them are considered garbage. The few 3D Sonic games that were well received are filled with, you guessed it, good level design. So what does good level design mean when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog? When you boil it down, it means stages that complement Sonic's speed and abilities while rewarding players for quick thinking and good timing. Memorization shouldn't be required, but knowledge of a level should make the overall flow much, much smoother. Basically, well-designed Sonic stages will have players wanting to replay them, just to perfect their run through a level. If you want to see a game that does this really, really well, just take a look at Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Real talk, Sonic 3 is the best game of the original trilogy. Sonic 2 is a great game, but the quality of the level design starts to dip during the second half. To be fair, Sonic 3 isn't perfect, but the vast majority of its stages are great. More often than not, levels are built specifically around Sonic speed, and even the weaker stages tend to have some sort of redeeming quality. Are there duds? Totally. But overall, Sonic 3 is still one of the best examples of level design in the entire series. To get a bit more specific, let's take a look at the Ice Cap Zone. This is a Sonic the Hedgehog level done right. Overall, the layout of Ice Cap Zone is one that encourages both speedy play and exploration. You want a bunch of fast loops and huge jumps? You got it. What about secrets and alternate paths? Well, you got that too. You know it's good when even an infinite loop section isn't mind-numbingly obnoxious. Even the slowest part of the level, these weird bouncing purple trampoline things, are fun to play around with. Compare these things to the weird bouncing drum cans in Carnival Night Zone. One is quick, fun, and flows with the rest of the level, and the other is in Carnival Night Zone. <laughs> simply put, Ice Cap Zone is a sonic stage that works with the player's abilities without simply being one long roller coaster. And the best part is, Ice Cap Zone is just one of several great stages in Sonic 3. Mushroom Hill, Launch Base, Sky Sanctuary. In fact, unlike most Sonic games, Sonic 3 levels tend to get better as the game goes on. And again, even the worst levels in the game aren't all that bad. So, what happens when you don't follow these rules? Well, you got stages like Wacky Workbench in Sonic CD, or the Labyrinth Zone in Sonic 1, or the Sonic Advance series. Truth be told, the Game Boy Advance trilogy isn't all bad. For a handheld game, the sense of speed is pretty impressive, and Sonic's updated abilities are fun to use, but the level design nosedives so hard that it ends up ruining the whole thing. What's even worse is that it starts out pretty well. The first Sonic Advance actually has more good stages than bad, and there's a genuinely good flow throughout the first half of the game. It's clear that the team was going for an updated take on the Genesis formula, and for those opening stages, they got pretty darn close. And then, the egg rocket happens. This is one of the worst design stages in Sonic the Hedgehog history. Seriously, everything that should never ever be in a Sonic game is a littered throughout this level. Leaps of faith, inconsistent physics, pitfalls. So many pitfalls. It's one of the hardest stages in the game and for all the wrong reasons. Egg Rocket Zone is a level that almost requires prior knowledge just to beat it. And I mean, I still don't fully understand how I got through some of these sections. Failure. Congratulations! The following stage, Cosmic Angel Zone, is only slightly better. Its pitfalls are slightly easier to avoid, but there are so many leaps of faith into giant pits of spikes that it almost doesn't matter. It's just bad design. 
But hey, you know, at least the first few stages were good. It's not as if they were all bad. All bad. All bad. All bad. All bad. Sonic Advance 2 hates you. It's a game built entirely around speed. So much so that the developers included a bunch of new mechanics so Sonic can go even faster. But for whatever reason, those same developers thought it was necessary to screw players over at every turn. Speed traps and cheap deaths are everywhere. And it's not just that the game is poorly designed, either. The placement is too precise to be an oversight. The developers put the obstacles where they did to create a false sense of difficulty, even if it meant killing the flow of their game. And there's nothing wrong with difficult stages, either. Classic Sonic games got harder as they went along, but Sonic Advance 2 is just downright cheap. There are so many blind jumps and pitfalls, and I get it, the game was rebuilt with this ridiculous speed in mind, but because Sonic moves so fast, it's impossible to see what's coming on your first try. Hell, it could be hard to see what's coming on your second, third, and fourth tries. Here's the thing, in older games, Sonic Team made it clear where the bottom of the stage was. Pitfalls only really occurred when players fell out of the level entirely, and the game gave clues as to when such a fall could be an issue. Granted, it wasn't a perfect system, but at least the games gave players a chance. Sonic Advance 2 throws all that out the window. It's entirely possible to fall from one of the upper routes all the way to the bottom of the stage, and half the time, you don't even know why you fell in the first place. You want proof? I've got two words for you. Sky Canyon. Let's list a few small missteps, shall we? Number one, if you miss this first jump, you fall to the lower level. Number two, if you hit the jump, you keep going until Sonic's momentum takes you to the lower level. Number three, leaps of faith are required to access this new level mechanic. Number four, this spring is intentionally designed to send you into a pitfall. Number five, this spring is intentionally designed to send you into a pitfall. Number six, remember that special move that the game never told you about? This is the only point in the game where it's required to progress. Number seven, seconds into act two, this lip kills your momentum, preventing players from accessing the upper route. Number eight, proceeding on from there basically drops players directly onto an unavoidable spike pit. Number nine, oh, okay, I'll jump for these rings and then, okay, fuck you. Number 10, where do I go? Do I just keep bouncing on this spring? Do I go right? I guess I'll go to the right. Okay, well, fuck me then. And the worst part is that, unlike the first Sonic Advance, it's not just limited to a few specific stages. Even as early as the first stage, Sonic Advance 2 is full of these traps that just kill your momentum for no reason other than to kill your momentum. And it gets worse as the game goes on, to the point where it's downright infuriating just to play the game. I cannot say it enough. Getting dumped off a ledge and into a pit isn't challenging, it just makes the game feel like a waste of time. Honestly, it's just not worth playing through. Oh, and Sonic Advance 3? Just kind of boring. So, what did we learn today? Sonic Advance 2 fucking sucks! Yeah, well, it, it, it's more than just that. Look, level design is an incredibly important part of any Sonic game. It's the foundation that the rest of the experience is built on. If you've got bad level design, chances are you're going to have a bad Sonic game. Sonic 3 and Knuckles had great level design, and people still love to talk about that game after 20 plus years. Sonic Advance 2 had got off a level design and it's garbage and it's pretty much been forgotten at this point. Now, it might sound like I'm picking on Sonic Advance, but this really does apply to the rest of the franchise. Any Sonic game, good or bad, relies on its level design more than anything. Think about it. Sloppy controls can be saved by great level design, but trying to get tight controls to work with terrible level design? Well, as history has shown us, that's when things really start to fall apart. But hey, you know what? At the very least, future's looking pretty bright. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to know when new videos are out as soon as they are uploaded, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you want to help the channel grow, make sure to share the video around on like Facebook and Twitter and Reddit, I don't know. Otherwise, I am going to get some much needed sleep. I will see you all next time.